da 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 Alright. Oh, I had that game. What, you, what, what, what game? 007. Yeah, fuck yeah, Golden dude. That's what this episode's about. This episode is about the one and only James Bond's 007s. My Golden name is, Eye. That's one of the movies. That's the only one that I know. That was the Nintendo 64 <laughs> game. Nintendo 64. Yeah, it was an incredible game. Yeah. One of the greatest games of all time, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Slappers only. Slappers only? Fucking, that was epic, bro. That's the best. Slappers only on Friday nights with pizza, man. <laughs> Forget it. You just fucking can't not laugh. It's so funny. It's so funny. We I'm did, so happy whoever decided to do that in the game. We did pistols only, one-shot kills. Mm, we have done that, too. That was fucking epic. It's not as silly, but it's... it's uh, Fun. Well, welcome to Shit They Don't Tell You. My name is Steve Green, aka the Iceman, aka and the Shit What That They Do Not Tell You show. That's your name. And this is I'm Nikki Limo. That's it. Cool. And today we're talking about the one and only James Bond's 007. So, who is when you think about James Bond's 007, what do you think about? I just said my N64 Golden Eye Slappers only. What else do you think about? Like when you think about watching one of the movies? I think about um, Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> Because they were like making fun of James Bond, right? True. I mean, they're, they're parodying it. Yes, they um, were. So I, I fell in love with that those movies. Right. So I know that that's what they're parodying. Um, I also think of Bond girls, and they're they're all sexy, but they're also badass. And then I think of Daniel Craig, and um, and Adele. Okay, pretty good start. Yeah. Pretty oh, and Shaken start. Not Stirred. Okay. Dude, this this is a series, right? That so there's a book, uh, well there's a whole book series by Ian Fleming, who's who is the creator of Bond. He claims to have been in he he was working in British intelligence, but he claims to have been basically James Bond. He's like writing his own books. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. That's tight. It's pretty tight. How badass you like are uh, you're James Bond, and then you write yourself as the hero of your book, and then everyone's like, yeah, you're badass. Exactly. So he didn't, you know, he didn't want to name him Ian Fleming because it's not as sick as this fucking bird book that he had on his yeah. shelf. It's a it's literally a book about ornithology, the study of birds. And it was written by James Bond. And he's like, that's a sick name. So he just Whoa. took that name and named his spy self James Bond. Okay, that makes me feel like he's not really as badass as he portrays There's himself. There's no way. Then. Because Who like, doesn't embellish a story? Exactly. It sounds more like he wants to be this badass, yes. which is fine. We all want to. Yeah, of course. We're all nerds wanting to be badass. Well, Ian Fleming was kind of uh, like a super um, rugged dude. Mm-hmm. Like a, and uh, with a lot of his opinions as well, he was very like oh. almost fa- almost fascistic. Like, I like being aggressive. He kind of yeah. Okay. He was very uh, he was a hard man apparently. Oh. But uh, well, we like him hard. Well, sure, but not 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 okay. not like that. Just but, yeah. saying. Uh, Do so you, you don't know. Well, <laughs> good point. Good point. So early Bond mm-hmm. was um, before Sean Connery was seen as this rugged individual. He, he, um, he's he's pretty close to Daniel. I was gonna Craig. say that's kind of the Daniel Craig version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fell asleep in those movies, but I, it's not because they were boring. It's just because when in every action movie, something about the rumbling makes the seats vibrate and it lulls me to sleep. I don't know why. You're the opposite of everyone else. I know it happens at concerts too. <laughs> I get lulled to sleep. <laughs> the vibrations. The vibrations. <laughs> What the fuck? It's from um, Talladega Nights. Okay, I didn't Molly know Shannon. That. I haven't seen that movie in twenty years, so <laughs> thanks for that. Sorry, it reminded me of that. She wow. gets, she loves the racing so much, and like the cars are whizzing by, and she's like, the vibrations. <laughs> anyway. You're not watching the show. Anyway, sh- I'm sorry. You should, I'm sorry because her boobs were just jiggling all over. That's the place. what she does. She's sexually turned on by the race car I vibrations. Get it. Okay. I get it. Anyway, that's why sorry. you should be watching the YouTube one as well as downloading it. Okay, you gotta do both. Gotta do both. Okay. So, yeah, so Daniel Craig's pretty close to the OG James Bond version. Now, obviously, Sean Connery was the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, Sean Connery set the table. He set the tone. He was the template going forward. Many people argue has never been as good as Sean Connery. Yeah, I didn't see any of those versions. Did you ever see uh we'll we'll get we'll get into By it. By the way, whenever we do topics like this cuz if you're like, "Wait, why are they doing a topic on James Bond if Nikki's never even seen it?" We, when Steve picks a topic he's passionate about, he usually picks a topic I had know little to nothing about. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh well also, I it's it's I'm not I'm not exactly here 
other than to tell you about James Bond and the history of it and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I'm not exactly here to um, make you want to watch James Bond. I'm here to explain a cultural phenomenon that's happened. I see. And it's more like, here's here's why it has the staying power and all that kind oh, of shit. Oh, that's dope. I'm interested in that. Yeah, because I don't, I'm not here to, you got to watch this movie and shit. I hate those people. Okay? Well, I thought it was going to be like Batman where like I know nothing about it and, you know, well, you no. nerd out on it and you're like, what's your favorite Batmobile? I'm like, I don't fucking know. The black one? Fair. I think that was an excellent episode. <laughs> no, it was great. It was great. I just wish I was more knowledgeable. No, I all. understand, but that's it's fine. All. You that's are the all. voice of many in the audience who have yeah. not heard, and I thought you did that, that as well in the Batman episode where you're able to ask questions that yeah. people might not know. I was. That. It was very interesting. I love hearing you talk about things you're passionate about. Me too. I love hearing you talk about that too. Aww. So so point being is that this is a cultural phenomenon. Like it or not, love him or not, think he's a sexist fuck or not, James Bond has been here since the 50s. Maybe you're He's sexist? Well, many iterations of Bond have existed, right? Uh-huh. And in quite a few of those, he's been like in the Sean Connery movies, he would sometimes pack, uh, he would, there's the scene where he pats a chick on the ass and he's uh-huh. like, not now, darling, man talk. Oh. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. He also hits women, but I, I think that he also hits men too. So I think it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible start. Thank you. Uh, so. Yeah, so Sean Connery set the table for everybody else. Like he was the first guy in the tuxedo. Uh-huh. He was the template for the I more mean, gentlemanly type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he when he did it, everyone was just like guys were like, I want to be that guy. Girls were like, he's sexy. Yeah. That was kind of what was going on in that era. I see. Which I think was the sixties. Yeah, it sounds right. I think. Uh let me check on that real quick. One second. In Austin Powers, it was the sixties, so I think that's correct. Yeah, so Dr. No was the first bond movie with sean connery that was 1962 okay so uh as james bond kind of well that movie exploded right that was huge. yeah like guys are now like wanting to wear tuxedos and shit that was the Mad Men era right the era that Mad Men is set in yeah so yeah it was like a sexist time it was just a sec- that's what just oh was. yeah there was just, a rampant yeah. rampant sexism of course it wasn't james bond's fault it's just <laughs> This is the world. Yeah. Well, James Bond, in a, in a way, actually was kind of a lightning rod for a lot of that stuff. Like oh. you could you could uh, you could have justified a lot of that behavior because mm-hmm. you maybe watched the James Bond movie back then, or you learned it. Oh, I see. From that, maybe. But weren't the the women badass too? Like there were like yes, female absolutely. spies that were like super badass. Absolutely. Like, there was a lot of that. You didn't get a lot of that in other worlds. Like, but he always fucked them. <laughs> Oh. He never didn't well, fuck him. How do you know that sh- they didn't fuck him? No, they they wanted to fuck him too. No, so see, there's a lot of them. By the way, James Bond too was the first. Um, I, th- I think it was the first cinematic love scene with a white and a with a white actor and a black woman. Wow, was um, a Roger one of the Roger Moore movies with uh, it was uh, uh fuck is it the one with the Golden Gate Bridge man? Of uh, San Francisco, A View to a Kill. View to a kill. Okay. And she played Mayday in that movie. And okay. so at the time, like, like that was kind of a big deal because he like fucks her in that movie. So two steps forward, one step back. Yeah, and she was like super into it. She got naked and just hopped into bed. Okay, we can move on. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so in my opinion, the best of the Connery Bond movies was called Goldfinger, which is a very famous. <laughs> go ahead. And I don't know. No, no go ahead. It's like a golden penis or something. Yeah. That's what Austin Powers did a joke about with gold member. I mean, it, I think they did that on purpose, though. I think James Bond did like. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but Goldfinger was um, that was when I think James Bond kind of hit its stride. Like it had everything in it that we now see in every Bond movie. You right. have Q, the gadget guy in it, who's giving him cool cars and shit. You have cool. I mean, he already had some cool gadgets and stuff, but it, but it, they really just. That to me is the mold for what they now do. Yeah. In Bond movies, was Goldfinger, and they have like a some stark villain who's like contrasting Bond in some way, and some grand plot and scheme. Whereas with Thunderball, it was like a nuclear weapon, which was pretty decent. And uh, I guess they, the Doctor No, they kind of both already set the table that way. But Goldfinger kind of is when everything that we now see in bon- modern Bond movies mm-hmm. was in, right? So. Um, and then Q was played by Desmond Llewellyn, who was Q in like every Bond movie until he died in a car accident in like 2003. Aww. Yeah. So he, and, and it's weird because 
he actually is in a scene with Pierce Brosnan, who was Bond, uh, and he basically says goodbye to him, but they didn't know that he wasn't going to be in the next movie. Whoa. They were kind of passing the torch in a way, like as a just in case, because it takes a couple years to make a Bond movie. And so they passed the torch, and he died like nine months later. Whoa. In a car wreck. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So it's pretty weird. But uh, so now we're in the Connery era. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connery is not getting paid that well by the studios. Really? No. And he's super pissed about it. Like he. To this day, if anytime people ask him about uh, Bond, he, or especially Bond actors, he's like, make sure they're paying you. Because <laughs> they did not pay him. Wow. Well. Yeah. For that huge franchise. Exactly. So Connery does, uh, I think, four Bond movies or five. And then he's like, nah, I'm done. And this guy named George Lazenby, who was a model. Mm-hmm. If you guys want to know something about fucking human willpower, look up. George Lazenby trying to get the role for James Bond. He he um, wasn't an actor. Mm-hmm. He was a model. He showed up off the street. He found their production offices, snuck in, pretended to be somebody he wasn't, got in the office of Albert Broccoli, who was the- Broccoli? Broccoli, yeah. The Broccolis are the <laughs> Bond producers. Imagine that's your last name. <laughs> Imagine that's your last name and you have a billion dollars. Okay. Yeah. Makes it better. Yeah, right. Eases the pain a little. <laughs> Broccoli. <You> fucking dummy. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Broccoli. <laughs> Albert R. Broccoli. Okay, sorry. Maybe he spells it different, but I'm just thinking, is it like the vegetable? It's like the vegetable. <laughs> I can't believe that's like the most fucking gut busting shit to you. You're fucking it's losing so it. Because the guy's last name is Broccoli. <laughs> But meanwhile, Cat's last name is Goldfinger, and you're like, "Hat." But this one, <laughs> like you just you just saw a comedian kill. It's ruining my. It's ruining my Because you're crying from laughing at it. Yes. Somebody said in this clip to the broccoli Sorry. family, or anybody named broccoli. This, guess what? Mickey thinks you're cut, a fucking punchline. Cut it out. Cut it out. Don't cut it out. Don't cut it out. Oh my god! I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> Maybe it's because the guy's name is James Bond. It's super cool, and this it's guy's like name super serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, he's named Mr. Broccoli. Broccoli makes all the decisions. <laughs> okay. Wow, this really got you, man. I'm fine. Do you, do you need a moment? I say we leave all this shit in. This is a classic moment. Hold on. Why is it so funny? Naming people after vegetables, I guess. Okay. No, it's just because they're important. <laughs> they're being named after vegetables. It's like a, it's like a broccoli's making all the decisions. By the way, guys, Nikki's not on any kind of medication. Like, she's completely fine right maybe now. Maybe I should be. Yeah, maybe um, you should be. Okay, I know I'm good. No, it's okay, not that good. funny. People listening are like, this is not that funny. This chick needs to it chill. It just caught her off guard. Listen, <laughs> yeah, it just it caught me off guard. It happens to all of us. Okay. All right. I don't think I've laughed that hard on the show. You've never ever. laughed that hard on the show. What's the point of even trying to make you laugh anymore? <laughs> I'm done. I'm retiring. Okay. Okay. So, uh, George Lazenby shows up in his office don't and is like, I am your James Bond. I am your next James Bond. And Mr. Broccoli. Don't say his name. <laughs> uh, He's like, what are you talking about, basically? And George Lazenby basically uh, starts talking like James Bond. He looks like Sean Connery with his white suit on and yeah. everything. And um, he basically forces his way into the audition process, and they give him the part. Wow. Yeah. That's he, dope. Yeah, and he was James Bond for a whole whole ass movie called On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which a lot of people love and think is one of the best Bond movies because in that movie, Bond actually falls in love and gets married. And then his wife gets killed, and it kind of drives him back in. But he only got to play Bond once? He only got to play Bond once because after that, uh, Sean Connery came back. Oh. Well, and, and Lazenby, apparently, on, he only, he kind of was getting difficult with the studio. Oh. He, uh, he, he didn't have the, he was kind of being a cocky asshole because oh. now he, he just willed James Bond into existence. That's so pretty tight. It's pretty tight. But, um, he was not a, considered a good actor. The reviews on his performance were not killer because he wasn't an actor at all. Yeah. But he looked the part for sure. 
See, that's what I'm saying. Like the audition process is so much different than acting. Like people, that's why people are like, how, how, are, like, how did that guy get that role? You know, like when they're not good at acting, uh, it's because like a lot of it is how good you are in the room. Like you're schmoozing with people. And then like, if you believe in yourself, the confidence just radiates out. It makes you look better than you actually are. And then like, you're not on set you're like not working 12 hour 13 hour days on a set where you have to be in character the entire time right it's just completely different than being in a movie so yeah it, it is that makes sense so george lazenby when people watch the finished result i think there was a, a lacking or a lack thereof there a lot yeah. of people thought he did a bang up job for sure Sure. But i mean it's impressive the, yeah, the, no the story was really lined up for him too because yeah. a lot of the bond stories had been just the chicks are there <clears throat> They're either trying to kill Bond, they're trying to fuck Bond, or both. Mm -hmm. And this one, he just falls in love with a chick, marries her. She gets killed, and he's like, fuck it, I'm going back in. Mm. And he's, he's It's like, like John Wick style. It's John Wick style. He's I pursuing his, her killers and all that kind of shit. And then he unravels a greater thing, and yeah, pretty good. Huh. So then Sean Connery comes back. He does Diamonds Are Forever, which I think is a fucking bomb, bomb ass Bond movie. But by then, he's looking older, man. Right. Like he's looking like he's kind of graying a little bit. Like he's definitely an older Bond, which is fine. I, think. I mean, Daniel Craig is an older Bond. He is. So, yeah. he, but but that was you know, that <laughs> they was, were just used to him being younger. Well, yeah, and they even cast George Lazenby, who was who was younger than him at the time. Right. And so it was like, what do you guys want out of this character? Yeah, I mean, the the person that stands out to me as James Bond is is Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, he was our generation. Yeah. Bond, really. And like, so, like when I think Bond, I think his face. So do I. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I watched all of them. I mean, my whole family, every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, they wow. would have Bondathons like oh. on TV. And so we'd always be watching those Bond movies, dude. And so uh, it's definitely been part of my childhood, even the older ones. Hmm. And my dad used to, the reason why I love James Bond so much <laughs> is I didn't see my dad a lot growing up. Like he was always working. Mm -hmm. um, but when he was home, it was usually at night. He's watching TV late or something. And he would run upstairs and come get me and he'd be like, Steve, you gotta wake up. You gotta come downstairs and check this out. He's like, James Bond's about to run over some crocodiles. And they really did this stunt. Because they did. Huh. That that's one of the cool things about He woke you up to go see that? Yeah, he woke me oh, up just to watch cute. that. Yeah, it, it was he used to do that all the time for, for those movies. Were you excited or were you like oh. I was so excited because oh, yeah? I couldn't believe a guy actually ran across these crocodiles. I knew it wasn't the actual actor because my dad was explaining that to yeah. me. Yeah. But I couldn't believe that they actually did. Had a stunt person stunt. to. Yeah. Uh, the animal rights stuff must have been not that not that regulated <laughs> back then. No, huh? you could run across a bunch of crocodiles Apparently. in a row, and they actually did it too, which is so crazy. Like they actually managed to line these crocs up, That's... or alligators. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, I don't know the difference. They all look the same to me. And they he ran across their noses, mm -hmm. like as they're fucking snapping. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. From one part of a like a. Almost like a an island bridge, like without a bridge, to another like plot of dirt. So how'd that guy end up dying? That guy? Like that guy's got a one stunt goes bad, and that guy's right, right, dude. If you do, if you pull that off, and then you die <coughs> during like a, a stunt crash or something, that sucks. Or you died just doing like something regular. <laughs> like, that sucks even worse. Yeah. So yeah, that's one of my connections with Bond as a kid. But one of the cool things about the series has always been that they pretty much not not necessarily always, but in every mo major Bond movie, they always actually had a stuntman doing the stunt hmm. or multiple stunts. That makes sense. Until I would say the Pierce Brosnan movie Die Another Day, where they just went fuck it. He did all his own stunts. No, no, oh. no, no, no. I'm saying they didn't even have a stunt guy. Do, like, oh, like they had. They didn't him, even do stunts. They had him wave surfing, or, or what do you call that? <clears throat> Par when you have holding a parachute and you're on a surfboard. Parasailing. He was parasailing on a fucking tsunami, and I'm like, bro, that's tight. But the, but it was totally CGI bullshit. Mm -hmm. And as a Bond fan, I don't know, man. I guess I expect. Is them he to in a suit stunts. while he's doing it? No, oh. I don't know that would been cooler. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so. Now, uh, Sean Connery's like, you know what? I'm done as Bond. Like, I've been there, done that. I'm sick of it. He wanted more money, and the producer's like, fuck you, dude. And so uh, Roger Moore gets cast as James Bond. So he's considered, a lot of people consider him the silly Bond, mm -hmm. like almost like the Adam West Batman okay. Bond. Because he was all in on, like, shtick. 
I see. He was doing a lot of bits, a lot of prop comedy, and I'm kidding. <laughs> He's like the Steve Green Bond. He's not like the Steve Green Bond. Oh. Don't don't say that. If you got cast as Bond. Oh, dude, I'd be doing fucking props. I'd be doing Pratt Falls. <laughs> I'd be slipping on jelly beans and shit. You bet. So, um, yeah, Roger Moore was kind of a silly Bond. Okay. He wasn't as cold-blooded I see. as Connery was. So I'd probably find him the most attractive. You, I think you would. How about that? How about that? So guess what happens during this? What? There's a movie called Thunderball. Okay. Okay. And the rights to Thunderball were already pre-sold um, to the book for Thunderball mm-hmm. before the Bond series like became this huge fucking thing after Dr. No. Okay. So Thunderball <coughs> is owned by a different company. And they go, you know what? We're going to make our own fucking Bond movie with Thunderball. We're going to remake Thunderball. And we're going to cast Sean Connery. And we're going to pay his ass. Oh. So they do a movie with Sean Connery and Kim Basinger. Mm -hmm. And it's called Never Say Never Again because he said he would never play Bond again. And so the movie's called Never Say Never Uh, Again. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. And they remade Thunderball. with cheeky. It's cheeky. They remade Thunderball with an older Sean Connery and Kim Basinger. And... It came out at the same time, same summer as Roger Moore's first outing as James Bond. Huh. So both of those movies are Bond movies, and they're both in theaters competing with each other. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? That is really crazy. So the big difference, there's no Bond theme for the Never Say Never Again movie because <clears throat> they didn't have the rights to that, right? I see. There's no, like... Um, Certain like little accoutrement of Bond, yeah, they couldn't do because of rights purposes. Dang, but they had the name, mm-hmm. he's the number, he's all of that stuff. That's crazy, pretty interesting. Yeah, I couldn't, I can't believe they could do that. Yeah, because they had the rights to Bond yeah. under this one story, right? Yeah, so how funny, pretty interesting. So then, um, those movies kind of duel it out. So, were they so did who which one did the audience kind of side with? The Roger Moore version. Really? Yes. Okay, real quick, I just want to correct something. So, Roger Moore's Bond had already been Bond for 10 years. Oh. By the time that they made Never Say Never Again. I see. So, Sean Connery leaves <coughs> after Diamonds Are Forever. 12 years later, 1983, he makes Never Say Never Again. I see. And it, and it releases the same summer as Roger Moore's Octopussy and Octopussy 1 because I think the audiences were already used to that bond. I see. But it was close. Like it was like a $25 million difference like at the at, like domestically. Okay. Yeah. So, uh Roger Moore So did Sean Connery just quit being Bond because of money then? A uh, fuck yeah. Okay. Sean, well, well he I mean Sean Connery is is heavily known as being like super super into the money. Like okay. like like Harrison Ford. Okay. And all I mean by that is everyone's into the money. Right. But they actually admit it. I see. And a lot of actors pretend to be undo it for a bunch of other reasons, which maybe they are, but like mm-hmm. like those two are really just like like fucking pay me. Like Harrison Ford's like, I don't give a shit about Star Wars, but they're gonna pay me. Mm-hmm. So I came back. <laughs> He's like, like you know what I mean? And they yeah. he made like fucking a hundred million dollars doing that. Right. Or whatever. So uh yeah, Connery even in Diamonds Are Forever, I thought was a complete badass. Uh-huh. And I think that it's cool to have an older Bond and just to have a different Bond than the cookie cutter. He's always a certain age. Yeah. Like he's always kind of he's always kind of perfect. Yeah. Like he always he's never not confident. You know, I, I like the idea of an older Bond who's maybe not got it anymore, but he's got to be more resourceful. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was cool. Um so Roger Moore's now been Bond for a long time, and he's aging like a motherfucker in these movies. Okay, like the, one of the cool things about Bond, like the villains are extremely larger than life. Like there's almost always some kind of physical <laughs> characteristic about them that is like visual, so that when audiences, especially international audiences, mm-hmm. who don't necessarily um, connect with the character or whatever, when they see uh, like a bad guy on screen, they know he's a bad guy. I see. Right, like so, Doctor Evil. Exactly. So, so that's what they did to that to that guy's. Like they they actually, um, his name was Blofeld. Okay. And he he was the guy who sits in the chair and pets the cat. Like Inspector Gadget had that with. And and Mister uh, Doctor Evil. Doctor Evil. Yeah. yeah. So they were just all parodying. Yeah. Um, Bond, but Blofeld was um, 
he was always just some other guy until they actually decided to reveal him three movies in. And then they decided that the guy who played him didn't look scary enough. Mm. Like he was, he just looks like your next door neighbor. Too pretty. Yeah, he, he just looks like a, he looks okay. He just doesn't look scary. I see. And so they're like, man, this has been like a lot of buildup. We haven't shown him before. We always silhouette him or we show his lap with his cat. Ted Bundy didn't look scary. True. But when you're trying to put something yeah. on a poster. Right. Yeah. So they're like, let's just fucking make him look like a crazy villain, mm-hmm. like a comic book villain. So he's all bald. He's he looks like his face got burned with a blowtorch or whatever. Like they really made him look like like he was, like if you're gonna put that on a poster, people are like, okay, I could see it. Yeah. And so, um, they they had him do a run uh, in these movies. He he really was uh, more of a Sean Connery villain, and they kind of brought him back for Diamonds mm-hmm. Are Forever. Um, but they didn't really have him much during the Roger Moore mm. stuff. Roger Moore kind of did his own thing. But they but they always had these cool villains. Like like Jaws was one. He had metal teeth mm. and he would like bite you with them. And but he he, he would kinda he kinda had a charm to him. Like he would he would smile, he would never say a word. And he's this tall guy named Richard Keel who's like seven foot something. So when he walked into a room, you're like, Oh shit. Yeah. And so What do these bad guys want? They just want to kill Bond, dude. But like, that's it. They don't. Do they get any money out of it? I'm sure. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes they're like, "We got a price on his head." And I'm shit. just like, "What's their motive?" You know, just to be scary. I think so. Well, one of the cool things about about Bond, in my opinion, how do they get their layers? They really don't have layers. Oh. Not not always. I mean, some of the ones now they have more layers. Yeah. But these guys were more. It was just like, hey, he has metal hands, therefore he's a bad guy. And that was Dr. No. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like. No, not layers. Layers. Like. Oh, like layers. They're evil layers. We how do they afford them? They're always rich as fuck. Yeah, but how? Well, why are they so, why are they so angry? Because they're then? like tycoons and magnets and all that shit. So they magnates. only live. They're like, I have so much money. I just want to kill this random spy guy. No, they're up to something evil. They're like, I want to oh. launch a missile on the earth and fucking blow up the world and shit. But then they'd be blowed up too. Well, yeah, but they're but they're trying to ransom the government or something for money. Oh, okay. That was Got the plot it. of Doctor No. I gotcha. think. Gotcha. Yeah. So one million dollars. That's that was the one. That's the that was Dr. the Austin no. Powers one. That was in Doctor No. No, that wasn't. That was not Doctor No. <laughs> you pissed me off, Limo. <laughs> and when we come back, Nikki will continue to piss me off as I try to talk about James Bond to you guys. I thought we were going to get into the underlying themes of like culture. Well, we will. All right. But you know, we'll you decided see. to laugh about broccoli for five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> that was, that's hilarious. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, are you listening to Shit They Don't Tell You? Because if not, how are you listening to this ad about Shit They Don't Tell You? because they can't turn it off. They don't know how to they turn, don't know it how to turn it off. Well, that's pretty convenient for They're us. They're throwing their phone on the ground right now. Once you to can turn figure it, it out, could you please rate us and subscribe and like um, tell us that we're beautiful? We, Listen, we want it. We need the validation. We, but mostly we need the ratings because I mean that's basically how the world is, is run. How my we continue to make more and more and more of this content, this glorious content that you love so much. If you like the show, support the show. And if you don't like the show, support the show. And it's for free. The the stars are for free. Yeah, you give them you give them away for free. It's not like if you give five stars, you pay more money. They should have charged for every single star. I would have made so much money. <laughs> <laughs> they just made a killing. We're back. We're back, Hi. everyone. Welcome back. So now Roger Moore has been bond for quite a while. A movie, have you heard of it? Called Star Wars came out. I have not heard of Star Wars, but I've heard of Star Wars. Okay, so now we're talking. So, so this movie's out, mm. and everyone's talking about space movies now, and like that movie fucking crushed it. it was space like space is in, spies are out. Spies are not. It's not as sexy, right? It's so not then, as sexy. So then they're like, "What do we do, man? We got Bond. Okay, you know what we'll do? We'll send Bond into outer space." And so they make makes a, sense. They make Roger Moore a movie called Moonraker. Okay. And he goes into space. To compete with Star Wars, complete with a laser battle in outer space between Bond and a bunch of like trooper guys who could kind of look like stormtroopers in a way, but not not like exactly. But it's wow. like that's what they're going. They're just like they're just biting it completely. They're just like, hey, this is what everyone wants right now. Pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah. So then, um, he's been Bond now for a long time. They do the last one with him and Christopher Walken. 
as the bad guy, and I think Christopher Walken killed that part. Christopher Walken is one of the best bad guys ever. I love Christopher Walken. Yeah, he plays this guy named Max Zorin, and he's just a sadistic like bastard. Yeah. And by the end of the movie, he's like, and this is pretty visceral too, because I remember when I was a kid, I was watching this movie with my dad, and at the end of the movie, he's trying to cover his tracks, so he's blowing up like this, uh, I don't know, his whole base basically, and as his own henchmen are trying to get away, he's like shooting them with machine guns and shit. It's pretty fucking crazy and he's like laughing it's pretty pretty good bad guy pretty good bad guy so um so that's the that was kind of the roger moore era right so you start with the connery era yeah connery's kind of a so for a guy that a shtick as bond like he lasted a long time yeah well he was he was uh people liked him he was very good yeah he was likable he was very classy all that kind of shit but but it that's what i mean by it reflects the era right so you have the you have the 60s bond yeah where you know, free love's happening all over the place. And Bond was kind of, um, you know, he's kind of free loving all over every chick he meets. Yeah. Uh, and he's also kind of a, a misogynist and he's like smacking chicks on the ass and saying like, I'll see you upstairs, sweetheart, and, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And then uh, Roger Moore comes in. He's a little classier. He's definitely still a womanizer and all that kind of stuff, but he's a little more silly, mm-hmm. a little more whimsical, like like how the 70s was with disco and they have a lot of that shit in the movies by yeah. the way a lot of 70s like uh disco bell bottoms like music all that kind of stuff um and then the the 80s went to space he goes into outer space oh well, yeah late late 70s early 80s he goes into outer space and then um the 80s kind of happens right and that's like cocaine and like um wall street and like all that uh right kind of shit so they they went for a grittier bond uh, this guy named Timothy Dalton comes in, and he does these. T- he, he only does two movies, which is weird because everyone else has done fuck tons except yeah. for George Lazenby, right? So he does The Living Daylights, and he does um, uh, License to Kill, and he just wasn't loved oh. by the critics. But he was a very hard nosed Bond. Like he was like a badass. He he wasn't funny anymore. Like he mm-hmm. really didn't do the funny thing. He was still charming, but he was more rugged. And more like the original Ian Fleming novels were. I and I just don't think audiences were ready for that yet. I think that be- because the times were so serious, I think that he wanted to be a, a, a more um, representation of that. Yeah. But I think that the audiences wanted like more of escapism. Well, yeah. If you were looking, if you were watching a silly James Bond for ten years, like, and then you do the, and then you see the exact same opposite, you're like, whoa, what's this branding? Right, and he wanted to just put his own spin on it too. You know? Yeah, yeah, so, I get it. It's not he's not at fault, but it's... I think he was one of the best Bonds in my opinion. Really, I really do. I huh. love the Pierce Brosnan Bond, obviously, because I grew up with it, so yeah. I'm heavily biased. Um, and I also love the Connery Bond, but I think Dalton brought something to it that I haven't even seen since. Hmm. Where I just felt like because Daniel Craig's very charming, yeah, and he's very rugged, but I think that uh, Dalton just was a little better at that. I in see. My opinion. Yeah, I don't know. I found him very likable. I haven't seen it. Under so all that I wish brood. I could tell you. I wish I could judge. Yeah, well, I'm sure you'll really get to it. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so now we're kind of like they decided to move on from Dalton, mm-hmm. and uh, they cast Pierce Brosnan, and they do a movie called Golden Eye, which I think to this day is one of the best Bond movies, if not the best yes. Bond movie. Like it's killer movie, epic bad guy and Sean Bean. Who's a bad guy and fucking everything? And there's always there's a bunch of memes about how Sean Bean dies and everything. And if you see Sean Bean in a movie, he's gonna die. And he he, and he does. <laughs> he dies like a motherfucker in this movie. Wow. They drop a fucking satellite on him. Wow. Yeah. After Bond drops him off, uh, you know they're like they're, they're like I don't even know how many stories high. Bond drops him. He hits cement or whatever. Uh-huh. And then they drop up the whole fucking satellite on top of him wow. as he screams. Wow. Epic. An epic death. Uh So yeah, that that was uh Brosnan's first time as Bond and he was a fucking hit. Everyone loved mm-hmm. him because I think, you know, now we're in the 90s, right? Yeah. And people wanted a sillier Bond and like a funnier Bond and Brosnan kind of did both so well. Yeah. He was so good at the jokes and so good at the charm. Mm-hmm. You just really believed everything. Yeah. So, and yeah, he just, 
to me was the when I just think of James Bond, I, I yeah. see Pierce Brosnan because he's handsome. He was just fantastic, right? And then um, he 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 never quite could capture that first movie because not the first movie was a hit, right? Yeah, gigantic hit, critical hit, box office hit, the video game hit. Mm-hmm. It, it was a cultural phenomenon at the time, right? Because of the game and the way that like all that stuff like was burgeoning in our pop culture. Um, so then the next movie comes out, right? They tried to do a game with it. Nobody gave a fuck. It was lame. It was on PlayStation. Oh. They, uh. First mistake. You know what I'm saying? They kind of tried to do something with the villain where he was, uh, like a news guy and he was creating his own news by like basically setting up situations where he's, he's like false flagging things Mm. and making them happen and then reporting on them i see like that one um jake gyllenhaal movie which one's that i forget what oh yeah yeah yeah. it's exactly like nightcrawler it's exactly like that yeah it's exactly like that so he was like this guy named elliot carver and he's trying to do all that shit and unfortunately for pierce brosnan that he could never make a movie that was good again as james bond oh i just and that's you, my opinion. Obviously. You think that it was because it came that was those were after Austin Powers started making fun of that whole the whole thing. And so it, it kind of like to peeled back the curtain for people where like they couldn't see it as like serious anymore. No, I think that because they still they still did a lot of shtick in the Bond movies. OK, like he he's still doing one liners and, and shit. Like, yeah. Constantly. I mean, octopusy. Well, that was the Roger Moore one. But I know, yeah, but, but yeah, like, they, they they love that. Like they were throughout I mean, dude, the whole series. They're like, plus, there's a girl named Pussy Galore in this, these movies. Well, there's yeah. And she says hi. My name's Pussy Pussy Galore. Yeah. And Goldfinger. So yeah, it's it's great. It's you know they're obviously Ian Fleming's fucking like getting lit up in his super huge home and mm-hmm. laughing his ass off that he can get away with this shit. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Brosnan. I think never made a good movie again after Goldeneye. Damn. And he even kind of knows it. Oh. He's like, well, we had the one. Yeah. Like when they interview him, he's like, we had the one and, you know, we kept trying. It's just they could never get a villain to kind of match Brosnan. Like they went the other way with, with the Tomorrow Never Dies. Mm-hmm. But he was just like a tycoon guy. He wasn't, he didn't, he wasn't a villain to a lot of people who were watching. I see. He didn't seem intimidating to Bond or like a threat to Bond at all. So then the third movie comes out. It's called World Is Not Enough. That has Denise Richards playing a nuclear physicist. And dude, <laughs> when she's talking about nukes, you're like, you don't know what the fuck a nuke is. Yeah. How it works. Like when you are when you watch that movie. She is hot though. She's hot as fuck in that movie. Yeah. And they make sure that they, they, they paid her to get wet as fuck in that movie. That's basically what she's there for. Mm-hmm. Like she's there to wear, wear wet t-shirts and run around. Because that's what they do to her in the third act. Okay. They fill a submarine with water and they just have her fucking jiggling all over the fucking place. I see. Yeah. So uh, in that movie, though, the twist is that the Bond girl is the villain. And you don't know. I see. So it's not Denise Richards. It's this other chick who Bond is kind of super into the whole movie. Ah. And then they reveal that she's actually the villain in charge of everything at the end. Mm. And that the guy named Renard, who was this bad guy the super villain bad guy he's not actually in charge of all of it it's like eh, whatever you know what sucked about that movie to me they opened the movie with the fact that the villain he got shot in the head by a double o and now he can't feel anything it gave him no powers or whatever he just can't feel anything and also the bullet's going to kill him wait what yeah they're like yeah it's gonna kill him eventually so there's no stakes, really. There's no fucking stakes, exactly. Yeah. They, they, because they wanted to have some, because of the the characters I was talking about from the uh, 60s and 70s. And yeah. 80s, where you have Bond punch a guy, and he barely moves, and he's got a metal mouth, and he's and he smiles, and Bond's like, oh, fuck. They wanted to have some of that here, like yeah. bring some of that back. How about we get a guy who can't feel any pain? Yeah. How would we justify that? We put a bullet in his head, and they cut off his nerves, but, but it's going to kill him. I'm like you guys. It shouldn't this have had that part. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Did you, why did they do that? It should have made him invincible. Almost. Anything. Something. Anything. Yeah. But not like, hey, don't worry, the villain's already gonna die. Then you're like, oh. Mm-hmm. And that's how it felt watching that movie. I see. You just didn't know who the bad guy was because you didn't think that the bad guy was gonna last. I see. So, although in that one, 
Bond, the ch- the Bond girl who was the bad guy, he shoots her in the fucking head. Whoa! Like point blank. That's crazy. Like as close to you, as close to you so as violent. I am right now. She's like, you wouldn't kill me. You love me, and then he fucking blows her <gasps> away, dude. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's like the opposite of all the comic book movies, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, they they after that they do a Bond movie called Die Another Day. Which was complete fucking ass. Okay. Okay. That movie, Pierce Brosnan, once again, he's like, no, guys, I want to do like a story that meant something to Bond. Like, can we can we have him be out of his element or something? So they do it for like 10 minutes. They have, in the beginning of the movie, Bond gets captured in North Korea. And he is now like a North Korean, in a North Korean camp. Yeah. Getting tortured. By scorpions and shit for fucking Damn. 15 minutes. But it only lasts through the musical sequence, which is they always open the movie with the musical sequence. Okay. With like all these graphics and shit. Uh-huh. And then the whole musical sequence with that is just hit, Pierce Brosnan getting in a dunk tank the whole time, getting like putting, they put scorpions on, on his back and shit. That's pretty good. It's okay, but you hear Madonna throughout it. So you're not like, oh, poor guy. You're You're kind of like. Is he even really? I can't hear him screaming or anything, so it's kind of like. Well, it's a it's a cool contrast. It's a cool contrast. Yeah. But it doesn't. It's. I think what Pierce Brosnan wanted, they gave him for fifteen minutes, and then they're I like, see. "We're doing a regular ass Bond movie." Sorry, dude. Damn. So they they rescued him quickly and like. I see. Did a prisoner trade and all that shit. So yeah, you're just like, man, I could see where this was going. This could have been really cool. Yeah. And then they just made it a regular ass Bond movie because it didn't have the balls yet. Sometimes you know business gets in the way of creative dude that's kind of what happens with a lot of the marvel yeah movies, they like. get too scared they think oh well we don't know because it, it's a risk like we know that the audience likes this so like why would we're too scared to change it or, or maybe they even do change it in the original script but by the time it goes through all these uh, layers of approval like the the people with the money don't want to take the risk yeah and th- that's so that's kind of what happens a lot right so edgar right the director yeah was gonna do oh edgar wright directed it no no no. he was gonna do ant-man oh and marvel didn't like that he was making like an edgar wright movie oh with ant-man they why wanted to, they wanted it to be more of a marvel why movie. have edgar wright if you don't exactly Cause why you, you hire him for his style exactly and his flourish and the way he does all this shit it's like having hiring wes anderson and uh, not wanting wide shots <laughs> not wanting like whimsy this. yeah not wanting fucking and buttons col- on colorful everything walls exactly so that's what I mean, right? Or people delivering mail. What's with that guy and having fucking postage and everything? I don't know, but I love it. Right? I love Wes Anderson. I don't. I got no hate for Wes Anderson. Um, I just hate his movies. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, so that's kind of the problem, right? Is that anytime somebody wants to take creative license with a big property, mm-hmm. the, the powers that be are like, nah. Yeah, but that's what I'm. I'm like, that sucks. So like, we do a stunt in the beginning. Yeah. We play the fucking music. We have the graphics play. Then we introduce Bond's uh, mission, and then he um, fucks a lady, and then he, ex- he he completes the mission. Right. I mean, that's basically every single Bond movie. Yeah. Uh, so, and the and they and that's kind of how like how Marvel got right. Where it was just my opinion, but I just think that there's a template for Marvel movies, and they kind of do it every time, mm-hmm. and it works for them. So who the fuck am I to criticize it? Sure. Um, and they've made some good ones still. I thought Infinity War was fucking dope. Mm-hmm. But, okay, back to Bond. So Pierce Brosnan's era is now over. He wanted to do another movie. But they're like, you know what? We're going to go in a different direction, <laughs> which always sucks. It sucks especially when every one of his movies made even more money oh, than the last. So yeah. he's like, man, this has been killer. Yeah. Because everyone loved Pierce Brosnan's Bond and like all that stuff, but they just never quite made the uh, like a. They wanted them. It was it was now post nine eleven world. Oh. So uh, they wanted to go in a direction of like a post nine eleven Bond, and so they. Isn't that crazy that that was like almost twenty years ago? It's crazy. Like it feels like it was two years ago. Can you imagine a post nine eleven James Bond movie with Pierce Brosnan? It's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult because he's so 90s. And that was more of a serious time for a lot of people. Yeah. And so the idea that, and I think he could have done it, by the way. I'm not. This is for not sure. Hate. For I sure. I just think that it's just that, that was where the producers were going. When people have already branded you in their heads. like Yes. Yeah. So then they kind of simplify Bond, right? They go back to his roots. Literally the first book about Bond is called Casino Royale. Mm-hmm. And they 
they actually tried to make this movie in like the 50s uh, with an American actor. Weren't you saying that Henry Cavill was supposed to play Bond? He was up for Bond against Daniel Craig. Oh. Yeah. So. Yeah, that sucks. That sucks. But then he got to be. He got to be. But he didn't know. He had no clue. Yeah. He was in the final rounds. Like it was him and like four of the dudes. And yeah, Daniel Craig gets it. So and by the way, if you wanted to take the archetype Bond, I'd say Henry Cavill looks way more like the traditional Bond than Mm -hmm. than Daniel Craig does. Sure. But. I still think that that was a good move. Yeah, for sure. So plus, uh, he wouldn't have been able to be Superman. Exactly. Probably. Probably. Who knows? Probably. So, I've never seen somebody a part of two franchises like that either, except for like Ryan Reynolds. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're part of one franchise, you probably that franchise probably has first rights to everything you do. So, like, if they're filming, you can't go do another project. Right. Like, so you can't. If Marvel's filming at the same time a Bond movie is filming, like yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, you can't do that. So yeah, then Casino Royale comes out. I think this is one of the best Bond movies ever made as well because they actually did what Brosnan wanted, wanted them to do during Dying on the Day. They He wanted to have a relationship. Well, actually, since Tomorrow Never Dies because in Tomorrow Never Dies, he had a relationship with one of the Bond girls that was deeper and you could tell that he loved her and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And they ended up just not... They had her on screen for 20 minutes and then they killed her. So it wasn't like... You didn't have the investment. They tried to do investment like with backstory stuff yeah. that you didn't see and it just didn't quite work yeah. which sucked. they do flashbacks and stuff no they just talked about it oh which which was not great okay so that was terry hatcher playing that part she was lois lane at the time i yeah, know yeah superman on tv yeah oh, wait how funny we just said you can't be part of two franchises and then yeah she was killing it back then dude. yeah she was crushing it uh and then um so they kind of did that with casino royale where bond falls for uh, Ava Green's character and the whole movie is like a love story basically and then she dies at the end of it and then you really do feel it you're like oh fuck this sucks so uh, I thought Daniel Craig knocked it out of the park yeah I think he's definitely one of the best Bond actors ever no question he probably did I wish I watched it and, and wasn't sleeping fantastic <laughs> I did wake up during a few parts like when he's like covered in tar I don't remember that. Is that a part? I don't know. Maybe I'd rempt it. <laughs> I don't know when he was covered in tar in that he movie. He was covered in tar in a movie. I don't think. Maybe in one of the other Leave ones. Leave me a comment. He could have been covered. Look, so they do another. The next movie is called Quantum of Solace. Uh-huh. He's that one. That movie sucked ass. So that's when I thought, I was like, oh my God, guys. I can't believe you're doing it again. You have a good bond and you're going to pierce Brosnan in him. Mm. But then the next movie was Skyfall. And that movie fucking rocked. Everyone loves Skyfall, and they had the song. So that 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 was the magic um, thing that they had going for them since the start of Bond. Yeah. They they want some killer song that like rules the summer. Yeah. Or the winter or whatever. That's when Adele had that song, right? Yeah, exactly. So so you have a, a hit movie with a hit song, and it's just pop culture everywhere is your movie, and you're just cash and checks, right? Yeah. That's when. The formula works perfectly. Like they've had that a couple times, like the Living Daylights with Duran Duran and like like Lana Del Rey did one of the ones. Lana right? Del Rey did yeah. one. Yep. Paul McCartney did one. Uh, he did um uh Live and Let Die. Mm. So yeah, that's kind of the formula. They want to have a hit song, go with the hit movie. And that that defines that summer or whatever, right? Yeah. So then Skyfall comes out, they fucking crush it. That movie makes a billion dollars at the box office. Mm. Adele song crushes it. Uh, then they come out with Spectre. They get the same director back, and he was already kind of burnt out. And you can kind of tell when you're watching Spectre. wasn't wasn't a great Bond movie, by mm-hmm. my opinion. I didn't like it. Why? Uh, I just didn't think that. Um, I thought that what Skyfall did was actually break down part of Bond's backstory in an interesting way, and like go back to his roots. And they still had the story turning on its head like every couple every 10 minutes or so and inspector it was less like that and more like they were trying to analyze interesting thing about bond's past that weren't that interesting i see in my opinion so then uh now we have this now delayed movie uh no time to die i see so that's that's where we're at wow yeah very cool so i think daniel craig's bond was a perfect post 9-11 bond 
and they they actually simplified everything. Is he the Bond in this upcoming one? He is. Okay. In no time to die, and then and then he's done. He's retiring. I see. So, but what they did with his Bond was they kind of, if you remember, you you don't remember, Nikki, but in Die Another Day, Bond had an invisible car. Okay. Because it could project. This is actually a real technology, by the How's way. How does he find it? <laughs> you know, he has to use the beeper thing. Yeah, probably. Probably. So the idea is that the cameras are sh- are are filming your surroundings and projecting it onto the car, so that the car looks invisible, right? But you know they have like technology like that's that what I'm right saying. now. That's what I just said. Oh, shit! Well, fuck. I wasn't I listening said to. That. I was I was thinking about the video I was watching that had that technology. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But so in this movie though, you're watching this movie and it's cool to see it and all that stuff. But by then I think that the you know, and then he's also uh, parachuting on a fucking tsunami or whatever. Or what are you, parasailing? Yeah. By then, I think a lot of the audience was just like, man, like, I don't, I think that they kind of went too far. Like, I think that the gadgets just got too nutty. Yeah. And I think that the-, the Came like a Fast and the Furious type of thing. Yeah, exactly. It just got too too out there. Like, too like, hey, we, just because we have the ability to, to shoot this doesn't mean we should. And so- like a lot of the grounding force of Bond was kind of removed by then, which is kind of what I think happened to Die Hard. I think that in the first movie, he's this grounded character who is an everyman, who you believe like is this guy who's just in a shitty situation. He's trying to do his best. But, and by the fourth movie, he's jumping off a fucking F-16 that's exploding. I'm not even kidding. They actually shot that. Hmm. So, yeah, it's just like, He's not an everyman anymore, and now he's bulletproof superhero, basically. And so that's kind of what happened to Bond, I think. And that's what kind of the Daniel Craig thing did really well, is kind of bringing him back to his roots, giving him just a fucking little hand radio. They give him just the gun. that has. Yeah, I think back then, too, I, I would get Mission Impossible and Bond mixed up a lot. Mission Impossible, I... Th- because Tom Cruise kind of looks like James Bond. Of course. And they were both doing crazy action stunt stuff. That's what's so cool about – that's what they took from the Bond movies that I love about Tom Cruise and yeah. that whole group is they really do the stunts, which, you know, I don't even know if the Daniel Craig movies really do the stunts as much as they used to do them. Um, but, man, yeah, I, I think that, that that to me is the coolest thing when I, when you're watching a Bond movie. Like they had a – they actually had a, a stunt in Moonraker where Bond – jumps out of the plane after he gets pushed out of an airplane and he doesn't have a parachute and they he has to go steal another guy's parachute and they shot that shit for like 47 days and they had to design a special small parachute that didn't like look like it like bulged through his jacket in the yeah back. and they kept on shooting it and shooting it and shooting it whoa it's crazy and they had him like beating up the guy taking his parachute and then landing like Sick shit. So they actually did that. They actually shot that. That's crazy. They also did one uh, in a Roger Moore movie where they 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 had a, a car do a complete flip, but on its side. So it does like a 360 in the air. Yeah. And then lands and then keeps going. Whoa. And they ruined that moment, in my opinion, because of the era and because they wanted it to be funny. They literally played one, one of those slider whistles. So it goes. What? No. I'm not kidding. That's in the final finished product to this day. What? Yeah. That's... They don't, nothing cool. N- not the Bond theme. Nothing. They play that shit for a laugh. Wow. Sold out that whole stunt. Yeah. So so that's what's so fun, right? Is uh, As I look through all these eras, I see the differences now. Uh-huh. And I think that the Daniel Craig version is probably the right one because- Right for the era, maybe. Yeah, for no, for the yeah, era. Yeah, so it represents more of this era. Well, yeah, yeah, but also I think that you know a lot of I think that guys, whenever a guy wears a tuxedo, he thinks of himself as James Bond. Hmm. And I, well, like for a second, like you know, he's looking at himself in the mirror and he's like, "Fuck yeah, yeah, I need the car, I need so the chip." Steve Green does this when he puts on all guys seats. do this. Yeah, all guys. I got your backs, guys. But what I think is good about the Craig version and and some of the Brosnan version and and stuff, is that when the guy puts on the suit now, he's not necessarily like, I'm about to slap a woman on the ass. <laughs> yeah. Right? They managed to kind of bring it into the 21st. Right. Which I think is cool. 
Uh, and yeah, I, th- I think that the way that uh, Bond has evolved is is better. It's better than the OG Fleming version. That's great. Yeah, who's just a cold-blooded fucking maniacal killer. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a different story for sure. Yeah. 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 But um, that's my hope in all of this that I hope all of you um, take away from this. Yeah, what's the takeaway? Is that um, when guys want to be like this, you know, whether it's Tony Stark or – uh, Iron Man's Batman. or Batman's. Yeah, don't leave out Bruce Wayne. Or Bond or Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Um, you know, who is that person and why do they want to be like them? And I hope it's not, you know, so you can shoot a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> like, and look cool. Yeah. And drink martinis. Like, I I think that the thing that I love about Bond at the end of the day is that he's a guy who will, na- who will not give up. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about John McClane, too, from the Die Hard series. He's an everyday guy who just won't fucking give up. No matter what they throw at him, he will not give up. And that's what I love about Bond. And John Wick. And John Wick. And, and I think that that's... But he's not an everyday guy, but yeah. But that's kind of the, the, the carry through. Yeah. Like, I, like when, I, the, when I think of characters that I want to make or whatever or write, I think about that one underlying thing. Hmm. Is, is that they just will not fucking quit no matter what you throw at them. Or when you think they're the most fucked, that's when they try push even harder. I want a character that's just like, nah, forget it. <laughs> I want to sleep all day and I want to uh, foster cats. Yes. Can you write that I character? I think we could write that, yeah. And that badass one falls in love with her for no reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, we can work on that. All right, sick. I think that's sick. I like it. Do you have any questions about Bond? Um, I mean, I don't. I didn't even know like what I didn't know. Right. You know? Um, I. Okay, so it seems like Daniel Craig is your favorite one. No, wait. You said you said someone else. Was I your think favorite. that Pierce Brosnan is archetype wise and the way that he did it and it was his humor. You said the one before that was your favorite. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan. No, the one before that. Oh, that Dalton. Got, I yeah. think he's one of the best Bonds. I think he's one of my favorite Bonds as well. Yeah. But I think it, I think I have to say Pierce Brosnan is my favorite Bond. Yeah. And then I think that probably Daniel Craig's Bond movies I think are incredible. And I think that Dalton's performance is my second favorite. Do you, what do you think, Chicken or the Egg? Um, did you do you think that the technology of all these like gadgets and stuff got influenced by these Bond movies, or do you think that the Bond movies actually knew had some insider knowledge about these gadgets? Well, it's definitely both, but the, because Bond movies would create certain de- like doomsday devices that nece- don't necessarily exist sometimes, mm-hmm. but. The, they would incorporate the technology of the era, which is why they did that with the with the invisible car. Which I remember, I read a Popular Science uh, like magazine about that technology in particular. Like I don't know, a couple of years before that movie came out. Yeah. So, yeah, they they always try to incorporate. I mean, Mission Impossible does the same thing. Like where they they incorporate some kind of technology, but usually they do shit. They do shit more like the the cartoon heads and shit they do, and all the face. Uh, stuff mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying where they they'll wear somebody else's face and just get the actor to play that part right like it's a little different like whereas Bond they they really use like technology that exists in some way at least the gadgets that he has mm-hmm. like some of the um, you know like early stuff too like he has a briefcase with the blade in it remember that show Get Smart of course. Was that based off of James Bond? I think in that whole era, everyone's kind of trying to ape that. Yeah, they're all being spies. Yeah. But, Remember he had um, a shoe phone. There was a, an umbrella uh, that had its tip um, yeah. with a little bit of ricin in it. And that was used to actually kill, um, a, I think it was a Russian dissident during, yeah. the, during, the, during the Cold War or just after World War II. Like they were like leaving... Russia. I, I and, just watched a video on this. Yeah, they got and they got pricked with the tip of the, the uh yeah. the umbrella and the guy died two days later. Oh, that's what it was. I was watching MK Ultra videos and I was watching MK Ultra videos. Yeah, so we might have watched a similar video. We did. Yeah. We probably did. Because like back then, like it was all about trying to compete with Russia yes. for warfare. So it was like psychological warfare was the MK Ultra thing. Yes. And um, it was like, wow, everyone was like watching their backs for for Russian spies. But there were things like that where like they could 
the guy next to you is just walking and he spikes you with an umbrella. And then it was actually and, happening. And he's just, like, just like, oh, sorry. And he walks away yeah. like a good spy. And then, yeah, that guy, he was with his family at the time and then he died. And he was, I think, a, a scientist. I think he was uh, he was a Russian scientist who was defecting. Mm-hmm. So shit like that. I mean, the whole spy, all the spy shit from that era, th- a lot of that stuff di- did happen, did exist. It's wild. Yeah. I mean, people right now, they're like, oh, my God, 2020 is so scary. But when you look at newspapers back then, it's like <sighs> Russia has a nuclear bomb yes. now. Uh, like Russia has the ability to... To, uh, to go to space with a nuclear bomb. Us. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, wow. Like, imagine reading those headlines in the morning. Like, every day you're just like, are there spies <laughs> Dude, duck and cover drills for a nuclear bomb. How about that? They had, yeah, they had those. Uh, My mom had that in school. Those uh, bunkers. Yeah. Got popular. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. No, that I mean that, but that's every era, right? Every era, you yeah. stand ups at the time saying, "Boy, shit's fucking crazy right now, huh?" Mm-hmm. Like if you go back and watch Carlin in the eighties, seventies, any of that, he's talking about, hey, "Look, times are fucking crazy." Like it's it's always that's how everyone every feels era. in their era. No yeah, what. for yeah. sure. Yeah, and everyone must. I, we're now in that a generation, I guess, where it's like, I don't understand the kids anymore. <laughs> you know? Right. And I'm like, damn, that's how it feels. I know, dude. When I saw a commercial for the Travis Scott meal, and I was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> but I guess he's like that generation's new music artist. Yeah, something. for sure. Yeah. It's like it's like a JTT craze. Yeah, it's exactly like that. It's exactly like that. Is that what it's like? I guess. JTT wasn't. Like, it wasn't I'm like just trying to think of a, no, no, no. But he was like, there's always just a guy that everyone's obsessed with. But JTT, he was like hot, right? Yeah, I mean, he was an actor. Yeah, he was on. Is Home Travis Scott hot to people? I think that they like his stuff. Well, for sure. That's but I'm, I'm just saying, like, they're. I was just talking about pop culture in general, like the Teen Beat, Tiger Beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to understand because I don't know. I don't know too. this shit. I could be completely incorrect. He's maybe he's a real hottie to all these kids. I think he's cool. Yeah. 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 He likes barbecue sauce. I saw that. I saw that too. I think, uh, and then some people were like, it's not about the Travis Scott meal. It's about how it's $6. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, that makes sense too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like that. That's tight. Yeah. Um, so we hope that you guys learned a lot about James Bond in this episode. And please give us five stars on wherever. On iTunes. Yeah, especially iTunes. That's where it counts the most. Yes. But then also, if you're watching on YouTube, giving us a thumbs up really helps with the, with the algorithm. And leave a comment, please, too. And, and that helps a lot. And also, download the show. Download our show yeah. and watch the show. Okay. You Thank just you. gave them a lot of, a lot yeah, of, a lot of, instructions. A lot of instructions. Well, they need to do them. A lot of dicks getting stuck in blenders Hey, now. those are your fucking, that's your homework. <laughs> we love you guys. We love we'll you guys. see you next week. We'll see you week. next week. Bye. Bye.